Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney. <laughs> and that's the setup. In Lost... <laughs> and that's how you play The Lost Expedition. The game also comes with solo rules, but those I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Or you could join me at the table for one and discover it right now with me. This episode of Table for One is sponsored by Osprey Games. Hi, I'm Paula, and today we are playing the solo mode of The Lost Expedition from Osprey Games, designed by Pierre Sylvester with art by Garen Ewing. All right, let's address the elephant in the jungle here. Rodney actually does have a rules video for The Lost Expedition that covers solo play, which you can watch by clicking the link in the description below. But his video doesn't take you through an actual play of the game. And that's where I come in. Let's go on an exciting and possibly deadly trek through the jungle in search of the lost city of Z. The Lost Expedition is inspired by the explorer Percy Fawcett, who marched deep into the Amazon hoping to find El Dorado and was never seen again. Will we fare better? Honestly, probably not. This solo mode is pretty tough. But let's see what happens. Since Rodney does have an actual rules video for this game, I'm only gonna briefly go over our setup and then I'll talk through the rules as we play the first round. So join me at the table for one and let's play the Lost Expedition. Wish me luck. <sighs> okay, so we're basically set up. I've got our trail set up here and what we need to do is get our little meeple all the way down the trail to the Lost City of Z with at least one explorer still alive. So I'm choosing these three explorers to play with. Bessie is my expertise in camping, Inez is my expertise in jungle, and Isabel is my expertise in navigation. Okay, so they each start out with three health tokens. I've also got my three ammunition tokens and my three food tokens that I start the day with. Okay, so actually I need to shuffle these, um, which is really gonna be difficult to do because look at this, these are giant cards and I have like tiny, hand I can't even hold this deck of cards in my hand. Like what is happening? Just the best <laughs> shuffle we can here. Oh my gosh, it's fine, it's cool, it's fine. Okay, so we're ready to start, play the first day and uh, see what the trail has in store for us and hope that we don't die. Okay, so every morning we draw six cards from the deck. Okay, so now we have our hand of six cards. Now we need to draw two cards from the deck to lay them out on the path, and that's how we're gonna start our morning path. So let's see what we get. We have card number 45, Nightshade, and 37, Electric Eels. Now we need to put cards in numerical order in the morning phase. I need to now play two cards from my hand. So what we need to be thinking about is what these different symbols mean. So right now what we have going on is in our electric eels, these yellow symbols are ones that are compulsory. We have to do them when we get to the card on this part of the trail. The blue is optional. The red here, you choose which red one you want. Whenever you see a symbol that is kind of grayed out like this, that means you're spending that resource. And when it's colored in like this, that means you're gaining that. So that's the thing to think about. So now we need to look at the cards that we have here. So I think what we should do first off is play this Kalapalos card. And then I think what we're gonna do is also play out the Deserted Outpost. And now remember, we have to play these in the morning in numerical order. Um, so right now, that's that's why the Deserted Outpost is going here after Nightshade. So now we will pull a card off the top of the deck. It's a swamp. Cool. So that's great. So we're gonna get lost in the swamp. <laughs> Immediately, we barely even started. I'm like, this is rough. I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play Zavante because we're gonna gain some navigation from this and I can spin it on this. So this is gonna go here. Okay, we have our six cards for the morning and now we have to deal with all of those cards. So let's go through it. Okay, so first up, we have the Kalapalos. I'm gonna choose the option of gaining navigation or jungle expertise. So we're gonna keep that here as our, we know that we have this resource to spend later in the trail. Okay, so now we come here to card number 22. We have some options. We can spend a food token to gain a camping expertise. Not bad, but we only have three food tokens and we're gonna have to spend a food at the end of the morning. I just feel like I'm not sure that that's necessarily worth doing. I'm thinking we spend a navigation that we literally just got to move forward one in the trail because that's how you win the game. If you can't get to the end of the game, 
you're, you lose, you're just gonna die. This means we have to kill an explorer to move forward one on the path. It's the beginning of the game, they have full health. I'm not sacrificing Bessie, Inez, or Isabel at this point. So we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna spin the symbol on this card. So I'm spinning my navigation expertise that we just got to move one just like that on the trail. These both now, this discards because we've used it and this discards because we've now dealt with it. Okay, what's next? Electric eels. Now this means we have to add a card to the end of the trail. So let's see what we get. I hope it's not bad. Cool and anaconda, no worries, no worries. Um, Great, so now we have the choice to spend the health to get to food by battling the electric eels hurting ourselves, but we also hurt the electric eel and now we get to eat it. I feel like that might be worth doing even though health is tough to come by, but food is also tough to come by and I think we should do it. So I'm gonna spend a health from, I'll just do it from Bessie because she's on the left here. She's the one, Bessie dove into that lake. She wrestled with that electric eel. She got a few, you know, lightning burns because uh, electric eels shoot lightning out of their eyeballs, right? I think that's what happens. Um, but we are gonna gain two food tokens from it. So one, two, that's good. So now we have five food. So that's actually pretty decent. Now we'll, thank you, Bessie, for your noble sacrifice. Okay, nightshade. Oh boy. I'm gonna use this option and I'm gonna swap our anaconda in our swamp because this means that we can spend an ammunition to gain a navigation expertise, which we can spend here in the swamp. I think that's gonna be a smart idea. Now I have to either take a health hit or a jungle expertise hit. Now I don't have any jungle expertise to spend, which means to do that, I have to spend a health from our jungle expert. So no matter what, I'm taking a health hit. So I'll just take that health hit from Inez. I'm sorry, Inez. You thought you were good at the jungle. Good at the jungle. But you stumbled into some nightshade and you went, that's real pretty. And uh, you hurt yourself and I'm very sorry about that. But we've gotten past it. <laughs> okay, deserted outpost. That's pretty good. But because we found it and we were like, we should spend like two hours here looting this place. It is going to add a card to the end of our path. Uh, so we have to do that. And it's a scorpion, that's bad. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So here's the question, do we wanna get ammunition or do we wanna get a health and a camping expertise? I feel like we should heal ourselves even though ammunition opportunities are few and far between in this game. I mean, if we die, we also lose. So I think I'm gonna take this deserted outpost for its health and its camping expertise. Let's heal up Inez. Isabel maybe accidentally pushed her into the nightshade. She's an expert, she knew it was bad. So she deserves to be healed a little bit, I think. But we do have a camping expertise that we can spend now at some point. It's anaconda time. Uh, this is a scary giant snake, look at that thing. It looks like a Nessie, like a Loch Ness monster coming out of the river. So we are not gonna take a hit of two health. I'm not playing that game. We are gonna spend an ammunition and because we have plenty of food right now, I'm going to use it for the uh, navigation because I'm gonna spend it immediately, basically. So I'm gonna take it down here to remind us that we have this as a, as a resource, but now we come up on the swamp, we get lost in the swamp. This is a tough first day. We're having a hard time. That's what's going on. Again, this symbol, which means add a card to the end of the trail. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get lost again. A thick fog, oh boy. All right, well, thick fog, that's a thing now. We also need to either spin to health, which like I said, I'm not playing that game. Uh, not yet anyway, or navigation. Now we just got this navigation to deal with this. So our navigation expert, Isabel, uses her skill to get us through the swamp. Thank you, Isabel. I'm sorry that I accused you of pushing Inez into the nightshade. Obviously it was an accident. Okay, actually, I, I don't wanna speak too soon. I feel like this is actually going really well so far. I'm probably gonna regret saying that because it's scorpion time. Okay, we have to spend a camping expertise, which we have here from the deserted outpost. So we'll spend that, put that in our discard pile. So no one has to take a health hit. Our favorite symbol that we know oh so well at this point, which is adding a card to the end of the trail. Oh gosh, 
And then we can swap two cards. Now here's the thing. I think that we should do this. I think we should swap the ants in the thick fog because this is going to make us skip the ants. But if we swap their positions, this means we can skip the thick fog. And I think we don't have any more expertise here in navigation to spend on this. And we can spend a health and get two food, which might not be a bad idea. So I think I'm gonna use this to swap these two. Then the scorpion goes away. We dealt with that. It hurt. It was painful. And now we have to deal with the ants. The ants mean skip two cards after this one. Well, we just have one. So the thick fog goes away. And now I am going to spend a health. Um, it's going to come from Isabel. And we're going to get two food. And we've dealt with the ants. Now that's the end of the morning. So we pay a food. Now, if you can't pay a food at the end of the morning or the end of the evening, whenever you need to pay one, you have to take a health hit from someone. So I'm really glad we have lots of food right now. I'm going to pay that food and it becomes evening. So now we need to play six more cards on our path. Three that are gonna come from the three that are left in our hand and three from the deck. Now this happens a little differently than how it does in the morning. In the morning, they happen in numerical order based on these numbers, as you saw. But in the evening, they stay in the order in which they are played. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. So first we start off by playing a card from our hand. There's some bad stuff in our hand right now that we probably should have played in the morning uh, to balance it out, but here we are. I'm just gonna start with this fever. We're gonna have to play all of this, okay. I now can either choose a card from the deck or one from my hand, and it can either go to the left or right of the current path. So that's how we get to kind of like game the order of things that are going to happen in the evening. So I think, let's actually play the Black Panther out. We're gonna put it here. Cause what this is gonna do is gonna give us a uh, jungle expertise, but it's also where you can spend an ammunition to get a food. And I think we have that before the fever, that might be good. Okay, so now we're gonna pull a card from the deck. A faulty kit. Well, that's not my favorite thing I've ever seen. I tell you what. Oh. I'm gonna put it early because it's gonna give us the ability to swap cards and that might be a good thing. Do we want to put it here? Oh gosh, I don't know. No, we'll put it here. Because maybe this will let us swap it with something else. And this is slightly less bad than that. Okay, so we're going to put it there. I'm going to pull from the deck again. Vampire bats. All right, I'm going to put vampire bats there. I'm going to put infected wound here because we're going to want this tent to pay for one of these tents. And now we have one more card we need to add to our path from the deck. It's a monkey. He is very surprised to see us. And that's gonna cost us a food, but we're gonna gain navigation or jungle. Great, okay, I know exactly what I wanna do. We're gonna put this at the very start of our path. This is our path for the evening. Okay, so first we have to deal with this monkey. Now we are going to spend a food because the, I love the idea that we're throwing our rations at this monkey to distract it from us for some reason. I, or maybe it stole it from our bag. Cheeky monkey. Stole food from our bag. That is what happened. This cheeky monkey stole food from our bag. Look, you can see the monkey has stolen a hat here. Um, but we're gonna get navigation and jungle expertise from it. So let's pay the food. We will hold on to this because we have that to spend, which is going to be good. Because now we need to spend a health because, oh no, that monkey bit us while it was uh, stealing food from our bag. And now that wound is infected and that is bad. So we have to pay a health. And Inez has the most health right now, so we're gonna pay it from her. So sorry, Inez, everyone's, it, this is an, an equality driven situation here with our health. We all now are all equal, but we gain a camping expertise. We also have to choose one of these to spend either lose another health or spend a navigation expertise. We're gonna spend this that we just got from the monkey so that we don't have to lose another health. So I'm gonna discard that to have spent that navigation expertise. I'm gonna bring this down here to show we have camping expertise now. Ooh, and then, through the jungle. Do you hear that? It, there's some rustling in there. The leaves are moving. Oh, oh no, it's a black panther. So this is going to give us jungle expertise, which is great. And then we can spend, should we, I think we should spend the bullet to get the food because we could spend the two food here, but I just, in past games, I have starved to death and I'm scared of that. So maybe I will regret spending this ammunition, but I'm gonna spend the ammunition and gain the food. 
and then we get our jungle expertise. There we are, campaign expertise, jungle expertise. All right, this is gonna come in handy. Now we're gonna lose a health because that infected wound never quite healed, and now we have a fever. We have so much food, but actually not enough health. I've maybe made mistakes. So I have a lot of camping stuff possibly to spend coming up, and if we don't have the camping expertise in our cards to pay for it, we have to pay for it in health from our expert. Bessie might die. So I don't wanna take the health from her cause we're gonna need her health in a moment. I'm gonna take it from Isabel. I'm sorry, Isabel, you're so sick. Oh gosh. And then I'm gonna spin my camping expertise so that I don't have to spend another health here. Um, and then I need to either spend, I'm gonna spend the ammunition because I really need to hold on to my health. So I'm spending the ammunition for this in our faulty kit, all of our stuff fell out. So just the last of our bullets fell out of our backpack. It's not good. Oh my gosh. And now we've seen vampire bats. We did catch one and we're gonna try and eat it because we're getting food. That's apparently the story we're eating this. We have so much food and like nothing else. Um, and we're gonna have to lose a camping expertise from Bessie because otherwise we lose two health because this vampire bat bit us. Because it's a vampire bat. That's what it does. They don't actually turn into vampires though. So we're gonna spend a health from Bessie to use her camping expertise to get through this vampire bat. <sighs> now the evening has passed, we pay a food, and that's the end of the first turn. That was a big first turn. Whoa. Now we do that again, and we'll see if we can make our way down the path. Let's draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we start Again, everything is gonna play out in the morning in numerical order. So let's just order these quickly. Okay, so I have these now in numerical order. I don't know that we're gonna end day two with everyone still alive, I have to be honest. Okay, so again, we start with two cards from the deck. We'll play them out. We have a crocodile, oh boy. And we have a vantage point, which is gonna come after. I, I am immediately regretting using all of our ammunition. Yeah, we're gonna be losing some people on this turn. We're gonna play the old pathway. Can we gain any health? We might lose now. Let's play 32 next, okay. Now we draw one from the deck. It's a venomous spider. That's not a thing that makes me super happy to see. So that goes there. Now we need to play one more from our hand. This is gonna kill someone. We are literally about to die. I We have so much food and I don't even care about it anymore. Why did? Why are those the choices I made? I'm gonna play Kapok. They're going to help us and I'm gonna heal a little cause I'm gonna need it. Oh boy. All right, here we go. So here's what we're gonna do. We get to this old pathway. We get to choose. We can either get a jungle. I really wanna move down the path. Okay. Okay, this might be a bad idea. Tell me in the comments, would you choose this to add a card and move your person down the path? Or would you get the resources? I'm gonna get the resources because I think it's gonna help me later move down the path, but that might be a bad idea. So we're taking this and we're gonna get it for its jungle and camping expertise. So now we have this crocodile. I don't have any more bullets because I spent them all, so we can't get, we don't need the food anyway. So what we have to choose is to add two cards to the path because we have to avoid this crocodile. Oh gosh. So let's slide down to make room for the two cards I have to add to the stinking path. Okay, that could be helpful actually. And then, okay, okay. That actually, this is not horrible. All right, we get to this venomous spider. Do we want to swap any cards in the path here? We can swap two. Now here's the thing, we could lose two cards from the path and we could spend a food to do it, which we certainly have, but these are two good cards, I don't wanna lose them and you have to pull them off from the end of the path. Oh no, I have to do that. No, okay, so we do wanna swap. And I'll, 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 I'll do this. Because this is gonna let me swap later, okay. So I've done that and now I'm gonna have to lose a, Bessie is, Oh no, 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 that's why we got this. Okay, we're gonna spin our camping. Betsy lives another day or another card. We're gonna spin our camping expertise to deal with the venomous spider. Get out of here, spider. We don't like you. Okay, I really think I should spin the food and move forward on the path. We've got to make progress here. And maybe that's a bad idea, but this is what we have to do. So I'm spinning the food and we're moving our meeple one down the path. Now I'm gonna spin another food. I'm Suddenly I'm gonna be like, where'd all my food go? And I'm gonna get this camping expertise. 
And then also I have this option here to spend a navigation to gain a health and lose a card off the end. As much as I want the health, I don't think I want to lose this card. So I'm not going to do that. And that will help Isabel live for one more card. Okay, now we have to lose a health. Inez, it has to come from you because you're the only one with... Oh my goodness, y'all. Now I can swap and I will because I don't want to lose this card. So I'm gonna use this to swap these. And now I gain a jungle expertise. I have no ammunition, so I can't gain food. So I now have two jungle expertise and a camping expertise. I'm going to spend this jungle expertise to get down the path. I should maybe be healing, but y'all, maybe we can just like barely drag ourselves into the lost city of Z. And now we have ruins. I spin the food. I do think I have to do that, even though there are no cards to remove off the end of the path. And now I can spend a food and a tent and move one more down the path and I'm gonna do it. Wow, we really made progress, but we are on the edge of death here because the ruins were lovely and we enjoyed them and we made it a little further, but yeah, we ate a lot of food. It's only been the morning. Morning has happened. We have to pay a food and now it's evening. We're gonna, we only have one food left. What's gonna happen in the, oh boy. Okay, it's evening. We got one health left on everyone, one food. I mean, we got one jungle expertise. It's not great. We have no ammunition and we now have to play a card. People are gonna die. That's what's gonna start happening. This Jaguar is such bad news. I'm playing the ambush down. And then I'm gonna play the Jaguar because this is gonna let me skip the Jaguar. Now let's just see what the deck has in store for us. Skip a card and move forward in the path or get three food. Well, this has to go over here because I, well, the Jaguar is gonna get skipped, but someone will die, but someone will die. <laughs> but someone will die. <laughs> We're gonna die. The path ahead, oh geez. One, two, three, four. Now we have two to pull and add from the deck. This is gonna let us, that would let us rearrange cards, which would be helpful. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna put it there. We're, I do not know, I do not know that we can make this work. And then one more. Ooh, a navigation and a skip, and then pay a I'm putting this at the front. Okay, so this is giving us a navigation, which is great, and is gonna allow us to skip the pounding rain. Then I'm going to pay my jungle expertise, and this is gonna allow us to get two food, which we do need, so we're doing that. Okay. All right, so that's that. Now we have the path ahead. So we look ahead and we see, ooh, this path is a little bit farther than I thought it was, which means we have to add another card, which is gonna kill someone. I don't have to pay a navigation to move down, but let me, let's, let's think about this for a second because all we need to win is one explorer still alive. So if I do that, Isabel will die, but I'll move one down the path and then I will move another one down the path and then I'm gonna skip this and then all of my people will die. Everyone dies because I have to lose two health here because I don't have the ammunition. So we shouldn't do that because that will kill everyone. So here's what we should do. We are not gonna choose either optional thing on the path ahead because we need to last a little bit longer. So we're just gonna, we've, we've added onto the path and that's that, we're discarding. Okay, so now we're gonna use this to skip the next card and then move down the path. We are three spaces away from the Lost City of Z. Okay, because we followed these footprints. Oh. Thank you for guiding us footprints. But now we have this Jaguar and two, it is gonna kill two people because we have to lose two health and they all only have one health. I'm sorry, Bessie and Inez, I'm sorry, left to right, you've, you've died. You've died, Bessie, you were brave. An adventurer, a true adventurer, a true expert in camping and I don't know how we're gonna set up our tents without you. Rest in peace, uh, Inez. Wow, you really knew how plants worked, except for that nightshade, but we'll forget about that. And um, we're gonna miss you. Isabel, 
is all up to you, girl. And now it's evening and we pay our food. <sighs> We've survived it to the third day. Well, Isabel survived to the third day. Let's draw six cards. What do we got here? Guide a rapid, some hookworms. Gross, getting lost. We have the opportunity to make some progress. We need three, we need three walking symbols to win, but we might be able to do it. It doesn't matter what's left on the path, you win as soon as you get there. But that's neither here nor there because we do need first to pull two cards from the deck. And again, it's morning, so everything we play has to be played in numerical order now. So, but Kyrie, swarm, gross, ugh. I am wishing we had that ammunition that we just spent it all the first turn. So now we need to play two of our cards. Do I have anything that comes before 13? I sure don't. So no matter what, this is the, this is the beginning of our path. Let's play. I'm gonna play out these rapids. Uh, so we have two options for trying to move forward on our path here. That we've got a lot to deal with first that's not gonna be great. And then I need to play another card. Let's play lost because it'll allow us to skip a card that comes after it. And hopefully the card that comes after it isn't a good card. Now we pull one from the deck. Dehydration. That goes right on the end there. And now we add one from our hand. Right now we're gonna be able to move one down the path. And like I said, we need three down the path. I guess we're gonna play River Crossing because all our other cards are gonna kill us. Oh boy. Let's deal with this stuff. Isabel, let's see what you can do. Um, we are gonna spend a food to get a camping expertise. Then we're going to immediately spend that camping expertise to deal with this swarm. We're gonna have to put up a tent to stay away from these bugs. What? Okay, so those both go away now. Now we have the rapids. I really think that the thing we, we really have to do at this point is spend our last food to add a card to the end of this path and move down the path one. So we're gonna spend our food, our last food, add a card to the end of the path. Insects. This is gonna kill us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we move down the path one. So now we're here, we are two away from the end. I think it's gonna be a miracle if we find the Lost City of Z at this point. If only I had two navigation to spend, I sure don't have any, cause it would kill Isabel. So we're gonna add two. Oh no. Oh no, I made, oh y'all, look what I did. I played the river crossing after Lost, which means I'm gonna have to skip. I have to skip the river crossing, which means I can't skip dehydration. I've made a mistake. Mistakes were made. I have regrets. So I add two cards to the end here. Yeah, it's a little too late for these healing herbs. And then my supplies get spoiled. Good, good, good. Okay, so then I get a camping expertise and then I skip this card, which I was gonna, what was it? I was gonna try and get a navigation from it because this would have killed, killed me anyway, so. Goodbye, River Crossing. Now, I can't afford, I have no camp, I have one camping expertise, but that's not enough to do with dehydration. I'd have to kill Isabel to do this. She has no expertise in camping, so I'd actually have to spend two health from her. Well, she only has one health. So to deal with dehydration, I'm just gonna have to slow down, take my time, rest a little, and add two cards to my path. A poisonous frog. and an injury. <sighs> oh yeah, we're about to die from the insects. <laughs> well, everyone, we don't have the navigation expertise to deal with the insects. We have to spin one from Isabel, which will kill her. None of my explorers made it. We were, this, I'll tell you what though, this is the closest I've ever actually gotten to winning. We were really close. We were two away from the lost city of Z. 
dead. Dead, 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 dead. Dead. Just dead. 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 Have you ever beaten this game on its solo mode? Uh, I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. And also, if you have, tell me what your score was because, fun fact, you can score points in the solo mode of this game. I don't know what they are because I've never beaten the solo mode of this game. <laughs> but I'm going to read it to you right now. How about that? You score one point for each remaining food and ammunition token that you have. We had none. So that wouldn't have done anything for us. One point for each unused expertise card in your team area. We had one. And five points if you have not yet shuffled the deck. Multiply your points by the number of surviving explorers to get the final score. If we had won, if we had made it over right here to the end, we would have had no food or ammunition tokens. So we would not have gotten points for that. But we would have gotten points for one expertise card unused and we have not gone all the way through the deck yet. So we would have gotten five points for that and then we would have multiplied it by one. One is about, but uh, as we all know, that's, that's not what happened, we died. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this solo playthrough of The Lost Expedition. I hope you'll join me for more episodes of Table for One. And don't forget to check out Rodney's rules video for The Lost Expedition. And you can also find the entire Watch It Played crew counting down top tens all month long and bringing you all the board game news your heart could desire. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to hit that button and turn on notifications so you always know when I've got another playthrough for you. And until then, thanks for watching.